On behalf of the Farmington Ministerial Association, we want to welcome you to this Good Friday ecumenical worship service. We give thanks today for the gift that we have in our Lord as we, we remember the events of Good Friday. And we also give thanks for the partnership that we have in each other as the people of God, as we strive to further the mission of God in the Farmington area and beyond. Today, those ministries represented in participating in this worship service include Advent Episcopal Church, Church of St. Michael, Connect Church, Faith Church United Methodist, Lord of Life Lutheran Church, and Farmington Lutheran Church. We give thanks for all these ministry partnerships with and beyond those who are gathered and connecting today. In this Holy Week also, as we look at ways that we respond and offer our gifts to further God's mission, we want to lift up the Loaves and Fishes ministry, that serves a meal each Wednesday night at Faith Church United Methodist, as well as the work of the Farmington Food Shelf. Today, I also like to give thanks to Pastor Jamie Thompson for coordinating and organizing this Good Friday worship service. A thanks to Carissa Dennis for leading us with music. And a thanks to Jen Watts for providing the logistics to record this service and making it available uh, to you in this way. Welcome and God's blessings to you as we share in this Good Friday worship service. We begin with a litany of hope and grace that's based on Lamentations chapter 1. Friends, on this holy day, return to the Lord your God with all your heart to commend your spirits into thy hands as we remember and boldly believe in Jesus' death. We are alive and saved anew, for God saves us this day in the grace alone of Jesus Christ. So let us worship perhaps like we have never worshipped or bowed or surrendered before. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pass this way, look and see the shadow of sin. All who pass this way, look and see the weight of the world. All who pass this way, look and see the suffering of our Savior. All who pass this way, look and see the sorrow of Jesus Christ. All who pass this way, look and see. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world.
let us pray. Gracious God, the cross is at the center of our worship, at the center of our lives. As we worship you today in these holy days, all our life, may beneath your cross, Jesus, be our truest abiding place as we long for sunshine of your face. We remember on this holy night, far be it from us to glory, except in the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. By your Holy Spirit, we will take up our cross and follow you. Keep our hearts on you at this hour, through these days, for all eternity. Through your passion and saving grace alone, tonight remind us we are forgiven through Jesus Christ, that we might commend into thy hands our spirits, trusting we are alive and anew in the life and hope given in salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from Matthew 27, 15 through 31. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. When the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, and he took the reed and struck him on the head. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him.
compassionate God. I'm so confused with the emotions and questions about that day in Calvary so long ago. Intellectually, with my mind, I know all the events and steps that Jesus and his disciples walked on those last days of life, which brought him to his crucifixion and death on the cross. But do I spiritually and with my heart and soul know what it would have been like to actually experience being there as Jesus was examined and accused of wrongdoing? Do I know how I would have responded at the trial when he was asked if he was the Messiah sent by God to God's people? Would I have supported his claims as the Son of God and sent to us to alter and change our journey on earth and to bring us closer to our God? Or would I have joined the crowd calling for his death? If I could get back in time and walk that road to the cross with Jesus, would I truly have been there for him? Would I have been there to wipe his tears and the sweat from his face and to give him comfort on those last hours? Would I give him my thanksgiving for all he did for teaching me? These are the questions that continue as I ponder and reflect today, this day called Good Friday. But I do know and recognize that you, God, have been there in my life day after day since my birth and lead me through some of my doubts and confusions and fears to a greater, greater life on earth. So dear God, allow me to see the beauty in my relationship with you, my creator, and Jesus, your son, and the Holy Spirit, my guide in life. Allow me to open my eyes to the vision of your presence in my life each and every day. Open my ears to that awesome words you have sent that structure my life. Open my heart to listen to the Holy Spirit who walked my personal streets and back roads leading to Jerusalem. God, it is my prayer that if I had been at Calvary with Jesus, I would have been there as a faithful disciple and not have deserted him in his time of suffering and pain. That is my prayer when I'm faced with the need for forgiveness of others in my life. And I will remember the words that Jesus said just before his death on the cross, words of forgiveness. And a reading from Luke chapter 23. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with those criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We trust that if we confess our sins, God will be faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we trust that you will remove our sins and that you are quick to forgive. Lord, we ask for your mercy and compassion, and we implore the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name, amen. In a reading from Luke chapter 23. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering, offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. you pray with me? Dear God, you remember us. You remember us in all things, in all situations, whether it's in your own suffering, as your son Jesus headed toward the cross, or whether it's in the middle of our, of our sins, and the suffering that we cause, you remember us, and you are with us. Today, God, we, we ask for the opportunity, we look for the opportunity to trust you in new ways as we realize 
that you call us to be with you in paradise, even in the midst of your own suffering. You provide everything we need. God, we ask today that we would know you in new ways and that we would remember others in the same ways that you remember us. That we would care for others even as your son Jesus cared for his mother as he knew he would be leaving this world. He made sure that she would be cared for. May we care for others in this same way, here in this life and beyond. God, we remember you today, and we ask that you would be with us continually in all things, and that you would always remember us in all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the book of John, the 19th chapter. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Let us pray. God, gracious God, we know that you are gracious to us at all times and in all circumstances, and you behold us. You keep us with you, and you give us each other to care for, and to be gracious with one another. God, in the midst of all that you knew would be, you knew it would be, and that it needed to be, we ask that you would help us to see, to see the purpose in all of these things that took place, and to know that even in it, and even in suffering, you do not leave us alone. God, we ask your presence this day, knowing that even in the silence, you are with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter. From noon on, 
Darkness came over the land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let us pray. Abiding God, source of all peace and comfort, there are so many times that we lose hope when our problems and fears feel insurmountable. Feelings of isolation and abandonment overwhelm us. But you have promised to be with us always, and we know that your promise is true. Renew our hearts with peace and hope. Send your Holy Spirit that we may feel your love and grant us a share in your work, that we may be a reminder of your presence and peace to each other. In the name of the one whose death and resurrection reconciled us to you and each other forever, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 19th, chapter. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. Let us pray. Father Almighty, may it be well with our soul because of Jesus the Messiah. May we find fulfillment, rest, and peace in the words of Jesus, I thirst. 
because our thirst is quenched in him. Our peace is in him. Lord, give us the wisdom needed to grasp the words of the hymn we just sang. It is well with our souls. Help us this Friday to understand in the depths of our being what it means to be at peace with you and each other. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 19, verses 29 through 30. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus has received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Loving God, we are followers of the Holy One sent to us, and we're now present at his tomb after walking with him on these last days on earth. My prayer at this time is that I and others gathered here can set aside any of the pain, problems, questions of why these events happened to a holy man sent to us to teach us lessons of forgiveness, of mercy, of peace and love, and to offer us eternal life with our Creator. Today I ask your help, God, to move on and to build God's kingdom on earth. For this is the time to remember the lessons we have learned by walking with Jesus in his ministry to others in his lifetime. This is the time to begin anew, to live the best we can day after day, and to see the good in other people, to do our part in working for harmony and peace in God's kingdom on earth. This is the time to let my spirit rise to a higher level, to join with the spirit of Jesus. This is the time to unite with other people, working together to make a better world for our children and our grandchildren. This is the time to model the life of Jesus, who gave his life so that we too might live with the passion, the commitment, and the power of the united Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so that we too may call ourselves disciples of Christ. Amen. And a reading from the 23rd chapter of Luke. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands 
I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. We gather here tonight in, in full recognition, Father, that, that we cannot understand the magnitude and the enormity of what happened on the cross. And so all that's left for us is to cry out, as the Apostle Paul did, O oh, wretched people that we are, who will deliver us from this sin? Thanks be to Jesus Christ. And it's only because of this that we can turn with the Apostle Paul as well, at Lord, and, and, and say, it is not we who live, but Christ who lives in us. May this be our prayer, Father. Live through us. Transform us, Lord, by your spirit into your people. Through the blood of the cross, through the indwelling of your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A litany of hope based on Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. O come, let us worship. O come, let us adore him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Though darkness surrounds us, you are the light and the hope of all the world. Amen. Amen. 